I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I ask that we have a moment of silence for um, Pastor Collins from Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you. First up, roll call. Alexander. Present. Spitelli. Here. Venez. Here. Kalwinski. Here. Salinas. Here. Tyler. Here. Emerson. Here. Warpole. Here. Rakels. Here. Nine here, all in quarters. All in state, all in, uh, all present. Hello, Mayor. Hi. Nice to see you all. Thanks. Uh, this is my address for the week of July 8th. Welcome back. First meeting in July. Um, activity log over the last couple of weeks, and then I'll get into a couple of issues about police and fire negotiations. Update on Clark Field. So, um, first off, Activity log for the last two weeks. We are doing weekly meetings now with regards to the Festival of the Lakes. As everybody knows, it starts next week, next Wednesday. Uh, we've been meeting weekly for the past few weeks, just making sure that we're taking care of last second planning, making sure everything's going according to plan. I know we have a number of college bounders lined up for the neighborhoods. I know Councilman Mark's always making sure we're, we're in the neighborhoods every year. I know we're working hard on getting college bounders lined up to block all the streets to make sure that nobody parks illegally in the neighborhood. So, Anyway, we're going to have two more meetings before Festival of the Lakes. Uh, I met with all five Hammond School Board members, uh, spoke to the members about the referendum, about the superintendent's position, uh, about abandoned schools and plans for the abandoned schools uh, and long-term planning. I uh, thought it was a good meeting. It was a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on in the school city. I'm, if you have any questions, I'm willing to answer. Um, participated in the annual Lakeshore Chamber Chamber of Commerce golf outing. It was a really good event, held at the last marsh. Place looked great, food was great. A lot of people came to Hammond that day. Always a good time. Summer concert series is going at the pavilion. I attended on Saturday evening, last Saturday evening, watched the Grateful Dead cover band from Indianapolis. That was amazing. Um, it's a great time for people that are watching. Uh, it's every Saturday night during the summer. They usually have cover bands from around the region, around the state. Uh, like I said, there was a Grateful Dead one last week. I'm not sure who's coming up this week, but actually I know it's not going during the festival. So uh, when the summer concert series is going, I urge everybody to get out there. I want to thank Jill Gajewski and the Port Authority for holding those. Uh, held seven interviews for the open chief of staff position. Um, everybody that interviewed with the mayor got a return phone call from the mayor and I explained to them you know, what I thought was great and what I think they should work on. So I think it was a real learning experience for everybody to put in. Um, met with, oh, I attended the visitation for a retired Hammond police officer who unexpectedly passed away, Lieutenant Michael Ramirez, a great Hammond police officer, retired a number of years ago, went to Purdue Northwest, a uh, great police officer, a Hammond guy, uh, unexpectedly and tragically passed away. So I attended on behalf of the city of Hammond. Met with the crew of station, uh, shift two at station one for our monthly fire department meeting. Thought we had a real good meeting. Talked a lot about what was going on. I tell you, there was, we have a lot of these meetings with different shifts and different stations. That one was really good. So I want to thank shift two at station one. It was a really good meeting. Like talked about issues that mayor needs to hear about. And I thought it was a really good exchange. So I want to thank those guys. It was a real good meeting. Uh, lunch with the controller and the new chief of staff, Scott Miller, uh, regarding details on when Scott's going to take over. Obviously, he's transitioning out of his role as superintendent of the public schools in the city of Hammond. He's taking over as the chief of staff from myself. Obviously, we want to work with the school board and work with Scott, so there's a smooth transition. So we had a nice meeting with the controller and him. Uh, attended the annual 4th of July fireworks display. Bill Porter's orchestra played again for, I don't know, 30th time. I don't know. <laughs> he's played a lot, but he's still out there doing it. I think he's pretty dang close to 90, too. So pretty impressive to see a guy out there every year doing the same thing. So thanks to Bill Porter's orchestra. And everybody came out to watch a great fireworks display. Hammond Port Authority also attended Whiting's annual 4th of July parade. Mayor Steve always throws a good party there. A lot of people came out. It was a great day. Hammond had a great float. A lot of college bounders. Uh, good times. Attended the council lunch with Councilman Salinas, Councilman Berry, Councilman Emerson, and Councilman Warpole. Thank you very much. 
for coming out with me. And to those that attend council lunches, I can only meet with you four at a time. I appreciate those of you that attend with me because I think it's good to communicate like that between the executive and legislative branches. So I appreciate you cooperating with that. Uh, update on police and fire negotiations. We'll start with the police negotiations. I met with the FOP negotiating team the, the week before last and we have made significant progress. The goals we have been centered around making our police department competitive in the now very competitive employment market for police officers. So the words recruit and retain have been used a lot. We need to make sure our current officers get a significant raise to retain them and that our department is also able to recruit new officers to make the department attractive to people looking to make police work a career. I'm willing to give our officers the raises they've proposed, but it comes at a cost. Some of the perks in the contract have to go away at the and the pensions we fixed last time can't keep going up or we can't give the raises they want. I'm confident we'll get this done and we're down to just a few issues. They're big issues, uh, but we are down to just a few issues. But And then I gotta come to you guys and tell you the plan for paying for it. But we are losing police officers as we speak. So it's a regular occurrence and it's a pay issue, make no mistake about it. Fire, Mike Cole and his team have presented a very thorough summary of where Hammond Fire Department sits related to other departments around the state and in the region. I'm committed to working with the union to correct wage differentials to make sure our firefighters have paid a very competitive wage versus other Northwest Indiana departments. I also wanna make sure we look at our paramedic pay and address them specifically. That goes back to the conversation we had the other day at uh, shift two, station one. Um, we're looking at adding an ambulance to better serve our residents and taking another piece of equipment out of service so that it doesn't add to the tax burden of the Hammond Fire Department. My team is awaiting some further information from the union so we can officially give the fire union our response to their proposal. So we're off and running with the fire department, with the Teamsters, excuse me, with the fire department and with the FOP. The Teamsters, uh, we are in the process of scheduling our first negotiations as we speak. So it's interesting, I want you guys to know when I'm negotiating with police officers and firemen, I'm negotiating with unions that about 25% of their members live in the city of Hammond, okay? They're asking for the biggest raises, and that's a fact. That's something that's factual, all right? Um, and then what happens is the Teamsters come along at the end, and I can tell you one thing about the Teamsters, 100% of them live in the city of Hammond. So I hear sometimes, hey, you know, let's cut back on the Teamsters. We're paying so much to police and fire. I don't really belong to that club because the last negotiation I do is the Teamsters, and they're the ones that actually are our bosses. They actually live here with us. So we got to keep in mind that police and fire can't eat everything. But we do need to keep our police department like we are, and we got challenges for sure. So Clark Field update. Clark Field's infrastructure is almost done. Preliminary site plans are being reviewed now for the 37 new homes. We could see ground rankings this fall. Stay tuned on when three remaining parcels where the old fire station is will become available for three more homes. All right, good update for that. The bank in downtown Hammond. Uh, floors two and three are gonna be open. Excuse, okay, let me do this how it's written. Floors four through six are almost done. Floors seven through nine are gonna be done after that. Floors two and three are gonna be open in the next couple months. Leasing tours are happening now. People will be moving in in August, and the event space called the reserve in the lobby will complete, be completed by the end of the year. So that's good news. Action items before the council. I know there's not a lot going on at the council tonight. I know there's items, but from the executive branch, not a lot going on. We do have a resolution that's still pending. I acknowledge Councilman Salinas. Uh, lawyers are working between Francisca and, and the city of Hammond right now. We're still not ready to bring it out. I apologize. Other than that, that's my report, unless you all have any questions for me. <laughs> Mr. President? Yes. Um, Mayor, yes, um, I've had... Sorry about your hand. <laughs> Thanks. Um, several questions, well, a couple questions dealing with the water department. Sure. Um, we know that some residents have not received their bills. Yeah, yeah. I did go up there myself, and I found out that uh, we haven't received our bills because there is a transition that is exactly. happening. Exactly. Um, the um, dealing with someone else is doing our billing. Yeah, it, it's shortly going to be. We, we tried to notify everybody that it was going to be delayed this month only because of the changeover, Councilwoman. I, I appreciate you bringing that up. I still don't have, I got, no, I have two different water bills. I got none of them at this point yet, so, which is unusual. So just a question financially, um, dealing with that. Um, is, since there's outsourcing happening, if you can give me a rundown on what that outsourcing has cost, um, and also like- I can't, 
but you can, can probably we, ask the CEO of the water company. Okay, can, can we find that out then? Um, and all the, the other question is, did anyone lose their jobs pending this outsource as well? No, I can tell you that. There's no layoffs at the water department. Um, if anything, they're completely overworked in the business office because we went to monthly billing and it doubled their workload and they've been slammed with work. So we've been retaining our employees, reorganizing. Uh, for efficiency's sake, the water department decided to outsource the billing. And uh, that's why we're experiencing this delay. But I don't run the day-to-day -day operations of the water department. I want to remind you, Councilwoman, I appoint the board members and they run the water department. I imagine we could find out the, the answer to these questions, but if I, they work directly for the mayor, I'd probably know this off the top of my head, but there is separation there. It's a board and a, independent CEO, so. But I'm not sure of the financial details involved. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Okay, any other questions about that? No. Okay. Anybody else got any questions for the mayor? Thank you all. All right, thank you, mayor. Thank you. Uh, next up, approval of minutes. Mr. President. Yes, Councilman Salinas. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from the June 24th meeting and place them on file. Second. And a motion is second by Councilman Emerson. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next up, approval of claims. Hey, Mr. President. There were two sets of minutes last time because we had uh, minutes of the oh, right. hearing for the food tax. Is there a second public set of minutes hearing. that I'm yeah, supposed public to? Hearing. There there public hearings. There is. There is. We have to approve Mr. those too. I think so, Mr. President. Yes. I move for approval of uh, the minutes of the public hearing of June 24th. Second. We put a motion and a, and a second by Councilman Salinas to approve the public hearing minutes on June 24th. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed? Aye. All right, next up, approval of claims. Mr. President. Yes, Councilwoman Vanessa. I move for approval of claims dated June 25th, 2024, and ending with claims dated July 2nd, 2024, claim number 5507 through claim number 6069 inclusive in the amount of $16,880,204.80. Second. I so move. Second by Councilman Warple. Is there any discussion? <coughs> any discussion? He said should wait for Any discussion? On, uh, roll call. Alexander. Yes. Spitelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Salinas. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Warple. Yes. Rakels. Yes. Pa claims passes 9 0. Next up, public hearings. We have none today. Communications. Mr. Hey, communications. President. Yes. Councilman Salinas. I have a few thank yous that I'd like to, that I think are in order, actually. Um, first off, I'd like to say thank you to the Public Works Department. Our supervisor, Juan Serrano, and his uh, crew in the 2nd District has done an excellent job um, taking care of a lot of the 311 app tickets, uh, specifically down Sherman Street. We have a large parcel of land that is just riddled with uh, trash and overgrown weeds and whatnot, and uh, Mr. Serrano and his, his crew has come out and uh, made that area uh, look look very uh, look very neat all the way around. So I want to say a big thank you to Supervisor Juan Serrano from the Public Works Department. Also, um, I want to say a thank you to Pastor Orlando Soler from the Living Hope Church. Uh, Pastor Orlando put together a crew that came out yesterday and helped uh, during one of our district cleanups along the Grand Calumet River. So a big thank you to Pastor Orlando and his congregation members. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Any other communications? Mr. President. Yes, Councilman Borbel. 
I make a motion that all communications we have received in, from the last meeting and in the current packet be accepted and entered into the record. Second. All right, been a motion and a second to include all communications we received in our packets. And a second by Councilman Tyler. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? I don't know, we're gonna do a roll call on that. We'll do a roll call. Alexander. Yes. Spitelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Galwinski. Yes, yes. Salinas. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Warple. Yes. Rakels. Yes. Communications uh, inclusion passes 9-0. Any other communication? Any other communications? All right, communications is closed. Committee reports. Mr. President. Yes, Councilman Woman Vanette. Uh, yes, Council as a whole will be bringing out 2414 for uh, final passage. And Mr. President, yes. I'd like to move on to Community and Crime Watch. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, let me, uh, as I do at every meeting, uh, tell everyone about the upcoming Community and Crime Watch meetings. Uh, Community Watch at Mount Zion Pleasant View Plaza will be Wednesday, August 14th at 1 p.m. East Ham and Pullman Crime Watch will meet July 18th, 6 p.m. at the Ophelia Steen Center. Edison Community Watch is off for the summer because the school is closed. Harrison Park Crime Watch will meet Tuesday, August 6th, 6 p.m. at the VFW on Holman Avenue across from Harrison Park. Hessville Crime Watch does not meet in the month of July. Irving Community Watch is off for the summer because school is closed. South Holman Avenue Neighborhood Watch uh, will meet at Trinity Lutheran Church on 173rd and Holman, probably somewhere in October, so uh, keep your eyes open for that. Uh, Whiting Robertsdale Crime Watch will meet Thursday, July 11th, 6.30 p.m. at Calumet College. Uh, I'd like to announce National Night Out uh, is coming up on Tuesday, August 6th from 5 to 8 p.m. We'll be at the Pavilion at Wolf Lake. Uh, this is a family event. Uh, lots of things for uh, the youngsters to do and for the adults it gives, and the children for that matter, um, gives them an opportunity to uh, uh, take an up close and personal look at our fire vehicles and our police vehicles and um, uh, our city department vehicles. There will be pontoon rides and uh, food. Uh, the Lake County Sheriff is going to bring his helicopter. Uh, in addition to that, donations will be accepted for the Hammond Animal Control. Uh, they are always in need of uh, bleach, towels, um, cat food, dog food, things of that nature. So uh, please come out, that's Tuesday, August 6th. Um, I do want to point out that tomorrow is the final day for legal fireworks. After tomorrow, if your neighbors are uh, setting off fireworks, uh, please feel free to call the Hammond Police Department. Uh, be sure to call in with a specific address. The police cannot chase smoke, uh, but it's just very annoying for during the middle of the week when uh, some of us have to get up and go to work the next day that somebody's shooting off fireworks um, on our block. So uh, tomorrow is the last legal day. I just wanted to point that out. Um, please come out to a community and crime watch meeting. Uh, as you all know, 
uh, our community is the eyes and ears of our police department because community is not just about me. It's about us. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman Vanessa. Any other committee reports? All right, next up, ordinance, third reading, final passage. Mr. President. Yes, Councilwoman Vanessa. I move for final passage of 2414. Second. Been a motion and a second. To be read. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Clerk Golick. I didn't mean to step on your toes. Ordinance 24-14, sponsored by Councilwoman Venez, an ordinance creating new funds, fund number 3393 and fund number 3395 to facilitate the 2024 Firehouse Project Bond. Thank you, Clerk Golick. Mr. President. Yes, Councilman. Okay, now. I move for final passage of 2414. Second. Second by, second by Councilman Spitali. Any discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Councilman. Uh, yes, this is uh, an ordinance to um, uh, create line items for the firehouse bond. Uh, the dedicated funds must be um, they must be, funds must be dedicated to a specific line item. That's what this is about. Thank you. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Any discussion? Roll call. Alexander. Yes. Spitelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Salinas. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Warple. Yes. Rakos. Yes. 2414 passes 9 0. Okay, next up, introduction ordinances. We have none. Resolutions, none. New and unfinished business. Mr. President. Yes. Councilman. Um, a couple of weeks back, I received few complaints, myself included, um, of about a business behind the street where I live on Indianapolis Boulevard, and it was, I'm not going to name it by name, but it was a repair shop. And not only did that lot, but the lot next to it had about 60 cars on it. A lot of them didn't have plates on them. And at one of the council lunches the mayor was talking about, I brought it up to the mayor about, is there anything we can do about that? And he set up a meeting or a text with everybody involved, including code enforcement. And within two days, those 50 cars were down to about six. Hmm. And I do know there's one over there by you that they're also starting to get some cars out of there too, but these repair shops are not allowed to go buy cars from the junkyard, bring them over there, and then take the parts off them and leave the cars sit on the property. And I just wanted to, I'm not going to name people by name because they all know who they are, but I want to thank the mayor and the code enforcement department for taking this care, care of this problem, kind of like as we spoke. So I just wanted to make the residents that complained and the staff that it's appreciated, so thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Any other new and unfinished business? Yes, Mr. President. Yes, Councilman Salinas. I have a few announcements I'd like to make. Um, first off, Monday night, tonight, uh, every Monday night here this summer, is the downtown Hammond Development District is hosting their Blues Cruise Car Show. The car show runs from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. There's lots of uh, custom and vintage cars on display, uh, as well as food vendors. It's uh, actually a pretty good time. If you haven't gone, it's worth checking out. It's nice seeing people <laughs> back in the downtown Hammond area. My second item that I have is uh, I'd like to let everyone know that this Saturday, July 13th at 9 a.m., I'll be hosting another neighborhood cleanup 
We'll be starting at the Calumet Avenue Bridge near Logan Street, working our way eastbound down Logan to the Columbia Avenue Bridge. So if you uh, or your neighbors are uh, interested or free, come on out and join us. Again, that's this Saturday, July 13th at 9 a.m. And one last announcement, the uh, Hammond Police Department is hosting their picnic in the park at Columbia Park. That's tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. I encourage all kids in the neighborhood and their parents to come on out and enjoy the free food, free games and prizes. There's a bicycle raffle. It's a great opportunity to meet the officers that patrol our neighborhoods. Again, that's the picnic in the park at Columbia Park from 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Any other new, new and unfinished business? Any other new and unfinished business? Any new and unfinished business? New and unfinished business is closed. Okay, next up we have public expression. The advise when you come up, to speak, you will be allowed three minutes to talk. Um, give your name and address, and uh, get, a, get a chance to talk to the uh, council. First up is John Chapsky. Yes. Uh, Good evening and uh, belated uh, 4th of July. No, like I said, uh, my name's John Chapsky. I am uh, born and raised here. I lived in North Hammond, 4616 Henry Street, all my life. My parents passed away and now uh, my life, uh, like I said, I worked at uh, Burger Supermarket uh, at a young age of 16. Had to get a work permit. Unfortunately, Bur Burger Supermarket uh, gave up the business. Then we worked at uh, J.C. Penney Catalog. Went to college. Went to the city of Chicago, Illinois. Citywide College, went three years, 88 credits, and has an associate degree in applied science. I bought a house at age 50. So picture, I had a big house, 4616 Henry Street, left side, west side, and had to give it up. And now I'm living at uh, 6435 Ohio. <laughs> I had to downsize. Now, this is a bad, you know, this is a true story. Like I said, I'm just pointing out to a person who is, and I can't figure it out. I had to go through, you know, someone else, but picture uh, a realtor had to go to school, had to, pass, had to pass the test. Then he had to pass the, uh, or her, she had to pass the uh, uh, Indiana State Board, right? Uh, to get an Indiana State license. And that's why I said I'm too honest. And there's a lot of people that are dishonest. And a lot of people that lie, cheat, steal. And so forth. But here I trusted the Indiana State Realtor after passing from state boards and get a, uh, getting an Indiana license. They knew I needed a, pl a place fast because I was in the, in the fall, you know, Winter time's coming. You know, when you're out here, the, the leaves are green. Oh, yeah. Take your time. But picture the, the leaves are brown. 
There's not too much time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chapsky. We have three minutes. Next up, George Stoya. Pass. Pass. Okay. Next up, TJ. All right, go ahead, TJ. Good evening, City Council. Uh, happy Fourth of July. Um, I uh, I just wanted to bring to you the public hearing presentation that we've referenced a lot. Um, it was from April 26, 2023, you know, last year. It was the big public hearing, and NDOT had a big PowerPoint up where they explained all of the different options that they had planned out. And so the two options I put on here for you are an overpass at Grand Avenue and the new terrain alignment, or Governor's Parkway which would destroy Briar East Woods. And you can find all of this on NDOT's website, um, this whole public hearing. And so I just wanted to point out um, how much more the construction cost is on the bottom, 11 million, 11.6 million, which the Post Tribune now says it's up to $14 million just for Governor's Parkway Bridge. Um, and as that doesn't help uh, kids walking to school at all, Hammond said that, okay, we need a pedestrian walkway as well. It's estimated to be $5 million. And it's going to take residential relocations as well. Um, and it's not known, there's been no details given about that, but it's going to be basically the same shape as an overpass on Grand <coughs> Avenue anyways, because it has to be ADA uh, compliant, so it can only have a certain grade, and um, and it'll stretch and take out just as many homes. I speculate, and I, I look forward to seeing the actual plans on this. So if you tack that onto the homes that Grand, the Governor's Parkway would take out, this is going to cost more money and take out more homes in the city of Hammond if we go with Governor's Parkway. Besides the fact, it's going to take out one of the last urban green spaces we have, Briar East Woods. And this isn't fully funded. You know, this, I still have yet to see it in writing that the railroad is going to pay a cent for the pedestrian walkway. But even for Governor's Parkway, the tracks program requires that the city pays 20%. So it's absolutely in our city's best interest to find the most effective Grand Avenue the cheapest Grand Avenue and the best for our city, preserving our wildlife, our parks, and the character of our town. So please do not support Governor's Parkway Bridge, support saving Briar East Woods, support an overpass or underpass on Grand Avenue to help school kids get to school. Thank you. Thank you. DJ? Next up, Ken Rosen. Greetings, Council. Too often people in charge make plans that divide and disseminate uh, areas with roads and bridges while leaving residents completely out of the decision-making process. That must end. Once again, here we hear of meetings and discussions about this project that are going on behind closed doors. Seems nobody is invited except a privileged few as usual. If it wasn't for misinformation, we'd get no information at all. They tried to give us the impression of a public input with the bridge survey, with the city bridge sur survey. It mostly just pissed off the residents on how manipulative it was. Pray nothing like that comes to your neighborhood. They didn't show us the actual plans. Instead, we got a fantasy land version that looked like a bicycle path wandering 
through the forest. This is the actual plan. Phase one, before the development. The west end, over here, by Parish Avenue. The city engineer said, we are only taking a sliver of the dune woodlands. The area where the dune ridge begins is right here. And all the big oaks and all the ancient shoreline starts right here and continues on the same route as the road. Does that look like a sliver to you? Misinformation. We are being manipulated. And for what? Not for public safety, not for the service. For land. Our best land. It's a land grab, pure and simple. Our councilman stated there are no plans for housing. And the mayor said various times there are no plans whatsoever for housing. Doesn't matter, the road destroys the entire place anyway. But I don't believe that they've been frank with us. I don't think you all have been frank with us. This is the project description of the tracks application that funds this project. The purpose is to install a new grade separation crossing at Parish Avenue and provide roadway approaches to the bridge and plans for future residential and commercial development. Doesn't say anything about public safety or service, nothing. But that's what we've been fed all this time. This is what the agency sees, but not us. We got this on a FOIA request. The city said nothing about this, none of you. This is what the administration plans for us. 68 residential lots and two buildings. Thank you. Is that fair? Is that real? Next up, Jenna A. Is somebody named J-A-N-A-A? -A -A? Okay. All righty. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jenna. So I have something I prepared for you. It's just a little bit different. On September 28, 2008, the people of Ecuador voted for a new constitution that gives nature, its mountains, its rivers, forests, air, and islands legally enforceable rights to exist, flourish, and evolve. It is the first country in the world to do so. With this law, nature could no longer be seen as a set of natural resources to be exploited or developed. This was groundbreaking, not only for the world, but for the 1.1 million indigenous peoples who resided in Ecuador. The indigenous always had a relationship with nature. They cared for their home and protected it. Nature not only provided everything to survive, but allowed the community to thrive in unity with their environment. Now shifting your attention to where we are in Hammond, living in this developed industrialized city with little green space, we all have lost that special conne connection with nature. So could you really blame us for trying to save Briar East Woods? Could you blame us for wanting to protect our green spaces? This space gives us something that is so rare and so precious. Because I am a human, just like the indigenous, I understand the importance of nature. And I know for a fact that damage we do to our green spaces, we are doing to ourselves because it has always been one thing. Nature is our home. And because we don't live like the indigenous, we need this space to remind us what home really feels like. Nature does not have a voice, so it cannot defend itself. So we, the people, will speak for it, and we will continue to protect it. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Do I have a motion to adjourn? We'll make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next meeting is July 26th.